Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. This is month number two, looking at operations and relations of sets with a new video every single day for the whole month of October. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is injection in set theory. Now, bijective one-to-one -one correspondence is not to be confused with injective one-to-one -one functions. Injective functions occur when every element of one class is paired with exactly one element of another class, but not all the members of the second class need to be used. In other words, a function is injective if each member of the domain pairs with exactly one member of another class, of which the range is a subset, though not necessarily a proper subset, and every member of that range pairs with only at most one member of the domain, though possibly zero members of the domain. Stated in another way, an injective function must match every element to one class of one class, its domain, with exactly one element of another class, and none of the elements of the domain may match with the same element of that range. The range can have, the, the second class can have at most one match in the domain. If the second class is the range of the function, then it is bijective and injective. If it includes the range as well as other values, it is merely injective. So if, it in, if you have a bijective function and then you add a couple more members to the range that don't match anything in the domain, suddenly you have an injective function. Or to the class, it's the second part, because it wouldn't be the range if it includes members which are not part of the actual function. For example, the function is the spouse of is injective from the class of all monogamously married people into the class of all people. Since all monogamously married people will match with exactly one element of the class of all people, and the class of all people will match, each member of that class will match with at most one member of the class of all monogamously married people, though they may match with zero people. This is not bijective since there are some people in the second class who will match with no one in the first class, but that's okay for injection. It's just not bijective. Here's some examples to illustrate. Note that if a function is bijective, it must be injective as well. So, functions that are injective and bijective, injective but not bijective, and neither injective nor bijective. So let's take a look. Class A and B, members 1, 2, 3, 4, and members 5, 6, 7, 8. Everything has one and only one match. There are no members of B that are left out. And also, there are no members of B which are matched with two elements of the domain. So this is both injective and bijective. We look at C and D, we see the same thing occurs. All of the members are paired with exactly one member of the other class in both directions, and no members of either class are left out. Injective but not bijective, we get things like E and F where we have all of the members of E are matched with one member of F. All of the members of F are matched with at most one member of E, but at least one member of F is not matched with anything in E. That's what makes this injective but not bijective. For H and I, we see a similar thing. If all the members of H are matched with a single member of I, and all the members of I are matched with at most one member of H, not more than one, um, but possibly zero, then it is injective if there is a member which is of I which is not matched with anything in H, then it's not bijective. And finally, things that are functions and are neither injective nor bijective, we have things like this, where you have members of K, which are matched with multiple members of J, so members of the class that this is on to match with multiple members of the first class. And we also have members that aren't used, but as long as you're mapping with onto multiples, you're not going to be injective and therefore not bijective. The same with L and M. Even though all the members of M are used, because 7 maps onto both 3 and 4, it's not going to be injective and therefore it is not bijective. Whew, that's a lot. As with bijection, injection is a tripartite relation between a function and two classes. Functions in this case are really just classes, but 
they're a special kind of class. So for a function f to be injective from a to b, it means that a is the domain of f, b is a subclass of the range of f, not necessarily a proper subclass, and each member of a is paired with exactly one member of b in f, and no members of b are paired with more than one member of a. Formerly, we might define I F A B as the three part relation of F is injective from A to B as follows. For all functions F and all classes A, B, F is injective from A to B means by definition that for all C, if C is a member of A, then there exists some D such that D is a member of B and the ordered pair C D is a member of F. All members of A have at least one corresponding value in B, and for all E, if C E, the ordered pair C E, is a member of F, then E is identical to D. All member of A, all members of A have only one corresponding value in B. And for all J, J the ordered pair J D is a member of F, if and only if J is C. No member of B is matched with more than one member of A. We will call this injection definition in proofs. Whew. Up next, we will look at the last of these three relations, what is surjection, and talk a little bit about the relations between these properties of relations. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org. Watch a new video every single day for the whole month of October. Subscribe, hit that notification bell if you like this content and you want to see more, and stay skeptical, everybody.